In this video, we're going to continue the screen system. We're going to be putting our screen system into use. We're actually going to be linking it up inside of the main game class, as well as creating our first screen. So let's jump in here, and we'll begin by switching over to the game class. Here inside of game, all we really need to do is to tie in all of the various points of interest. As described earlier, these are like our points of contact between the, the main game and our individual sub-games as screens. We'll begin up the top, near the top, with our input handlers. This is the point where these input handlers really get put into use. Their job is to pass the input from the input system onto whatever the current screen is. So we'll take out all of our temporary code inside of input pressed and we'll put in a simple call to screen. We'll look into the screen class, we'll grab the active screen property, and we will tell the active screen to invoke its input pressed method. And input pressed is going to need some input data, so we'll simply pass input data along. And as simple as that. So this is just, again, just a point where we're wiring things together. We made the input system. Input system is seen here at the game, so it's managed by the game. And then the game is in charge of saying, okay, we got some input, pass that along to whatever screen happens to be current. This is also satisfying the calls that we were describing on the whiteboard, mm -hmm. where whatever screen happens to be on the top of the stack will be the active screen. And so that's the one who gets addressed for things like updates and draws as well as input. Sure. So we need to do the same thing for input released. So we'll simply drop active screen dot input released into here. And now that takes care of the real actual implementations for our input pressed and input released handlers inside of the main game class. Now we need to jump down to the update method. So here inside of update, We'll jump in right below our call to input.update and we'll make the call to the active screen and tell it to update. So once again, this is going to be looking into the screen class, accessing the active screen property, and calling the update method. Now, of course, update is going to need to take in the current game time, so we'll pass that along. And that should take care of getting the active screen updated. Now one last thing we need to do is to go down here into draw and we will simply draw the active screen. So we'll do this right after our call to sprite batch dot begin. We'll once again look into screen, active screen, and this time we will call on draw. Now for draw we'll pass in both the current game time and the sprite batch to use when drawing. Since we're using the same sprite batch instance for all the drawing inside of the game, we'll pass sprite batch along here inside of the draw call. Now at this point, would the game actually run? It would seem that way. We've got all of our calls satisfied, but we do have that problem where the stack, the screen stack, is currently empty. So let's see what would happen if we tried to run. If we run the game, we notice that we immediately break out here when we attempt to use the active screen property. So mm -hmm. the first call to update here was trying to get the active screen. And we saw that attempting to call active screen.peak with no screens results in an exception. Nice. So we are not able to look at a screen if it doesn't exist. And that makes sense. Yeah, but even yeah, in its own way, that's kind of promising because we know we haven't put any screens in the stack yet. Exactly. So while we do have everything all linked up, now we need to ha we're required to have a screen in order to see the screen system working so we are going to do just that we're going to jump in here to the let's see let's actually start a new folder i know this is looking looking ahead a little bit if you will but we're going to make the main screen okay now in the game this is going to function as the main menu screen mm -hmm. so he's actually going to be a uh, menu. So what we'll do is we'll make a new folder inside of our project. We'll call this menus. And to this new menus folder we'll add a class. And we'll call this class screen main. And he is for the time being just a, he'll be just a normal standard screen. As a matter of fact we can indicate that by turning around and saying that screen main extends screen. 
Now, in the upcoming series of videos, we are going to cover making a real actual menu system. Okay. And so we'll actually need to revisit screen main at some point. Yeah, I was actually wondering why you'd call it menus instead of screens. That's because screens are going to play dual roles here. Mm -hmm. In some cases, a screen will just be a live game type right. scenario, like the actual game screen. Mm -hmm. And in other cases, we're going to have a special subset of screen, which is meant for handling navigation and item management. Gotcha. Let's see. Let's also clean up our sub namespace and drop in a few using statements. So we'll use the fairly standard Microsoft.xna.framework as well as framework.graphics that we use, we've used in so many other classes. All right, now that we have our using statements in place, let's jump into our screen main class and let's override the draw method. So we will override draw and we will leave our call to base.draw. This is important because looking back over into the screen class, it is actually the base draw method that handles drawing the background. So if we fail to make this call to base.draw, then we won't draw the background even if we have a background available. Okay. So we need to make sure that that stays in place. As a matter of fact, we'll make sure that it happens as the very first thing in the method to make sure that the background doesn't get drawn over any of the things that we're going to draw. So with the base call, or rather the background drawing in place, we'll make a call to sprite batch dot draw string. All we're going to do for the time being is set up some temporary drawing code just to indicate that this screen is working. Okay. So we need a font in order to draw. So we'll look at style dot font large. The text that we'll draw is just going to be main screen. And the position will simply be the top left hand corner of the screen. So we'll pass in a new vector two. As a matter of fact, to make this simple, we can just do vector2.0. And finally, we'll specify the color of this text as white. So, once this screen is put into place, all we should see is the words main screen. But we do have a screen class, an actual screen class, now available and ready for use. So, let's turn our attention back to the game and let's see exactly how do we put screens into the screen system so that we can use them. If we go up here to load content, we'll drop in right after we set up the log and we'll put a couple lines of code in place. We need to do three things really and we'll, we'll combine one of these operations. We need to instantiate the screen that we need. We need to store it into the screens dictionary to indicate it as available and it's this placing into the dictionaries where we will associate with a text based name and finally we need to make a call to screen.push screen to make sure that that screen gets entered into the stack so what we'll do is in order to instantiate the screen that'll just be a call to new um, screen of whatever type we're looking for so in this case new screen main now, of course, we wouldn't want to instantiate it like this and then leave it orphaned off on the heap somewhere. Right. We need some way of getting back to it. And that's where the screen's dictionary comes into place. So if we look into the screen class, of course, that's where we have our screen's dictionary. And we can add the new screen into it. So we can say add. Add is going to need to take in the key to refer to the element with as well as the element itself. So we'll add a new entry called main. Which is how we'll refer to this from now on. And then the value will be the actual screen instance. So that way we instantiate a screen, throw it into the screen's dictionary under the key main. That's very nice. Now, just the fact that it's in the screen's dictionary doesn't put it into use, because of course that dictionary is separate from the stack itself. It's the stack that contains things that are used. Well, actually, uh, I, we could see this if we jump back here to our drawing all we're doing is we're defining our dictionary here we just put the first entry in the dictionary we now need to do the work or set up the code that will do the work of getting main into the drum game and then dropping that over here onto the stack and that's simply going to consist of a simple call to the uh, screen push screen method 
So now we need to push the screen by name, so we'll simply pass in main as the name of the screen to show. And there we go. Now we should be able to test the game. And not only do we not get a crash, but we see the words main screen being drawn, which means that execution must be getting into this screen main class here in the draw operation. Nice. So that means we have our screen system linked up to the various calls found throughout the main game class. Very cool. Uh, one thing I'll note, we'll see a lot of this as we be begin adding screens, but we'll have many of these entries into the dictionary, mm -hmm. and at the end of load content, we're only going to have one push screen, because really this was the key of just putting that main menu on the stack. Sure. The rest of the screens will get added to the stack as they get invoked from menu options or actions inside of the game. So this is kind of like your initialization screen. You're going to start up the game and then you're going to dump on this screen every single time. But from that point on, they all kind of need to be added at runtime. Exactly. All right. Moving on from here, let's address one more topic, and that is getting the um, automation for loading in screen backgrounds. If you remember, up under our style assets, we have a series of textures, and some of those textures carry the screen underscore prefix. And the idea is that these indicate that these are our screen backgrounds. As a matter of fact, you can even see one of them is named screen underscore main. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is set up a simple loop that will allow us to look through all screens that have been created at this point and load in the texture that is associated with them by name. And this gives us a, uh, a further use of this um, key-based naming system. Okay. So what we're going to do is before we even show any of the screens, before we get to our push screen call, we'll put in a simple loop. Now what we're going to do is since this name is very important, what we're going to be pulling out of the dictionary is actually the keys rather than the values mm -hmm. because we can actually take a dictionary and loop over all of its keys. So we'll make a for each loop and we'll say that each individual variable will be of type string the name of each variable will be screen name, and we are looping over all of the screen keys that exist in the screens dictionary. So screen dot screens dot keys. So this way we can pull the keys out of the dictionary one by one, and then we have the actual text values so we can associate those values over here with our different texture assets. Now we do need to have access to the actual screen instance in addition to the key, so we're going to set up a local variable here and address uh, both of those. So we'll have a screen variable called screen, and we'll set that equal to uh, screen dot screens sub element screen name. So we get all the keys out of the dictionary and then turn around for each key and pull out that screen as well. So at this point, we have both the name of the screen and screen name and the screen instance itself. Now, before we set the actual texture, we need to assemble that name. We know that we've got a convention going where we have the word screen underscore followed by the name, but we'll put that together using some simple string formatting. We'll make a string local variable called texture name and so that equal to string dot format and then we'll simply put together a format string of screen underscore argument zero and then we'll specify argument zero as the current screen name so this is why all of your textures are going to have to follow this very specific naming convention. Exactly. The name that we use to address screens in code is going to have to be the same name that, they, that the texture assets end with. Now, once we've assembled this asset name, we can turn around and look at the current screen instance held in the screen variable and tell that screen to set its background. And then we'll pass in a texture. Now in order to resolve this name over to an actual texture, we'll simply use the load texture method found within the style class. So we'll look at style dot load texture and then we'll pass in texture name. And that should take care of getting an actual texture asset loaded and then we'll set that as the screen's background. Now 
since there is a, a bit of code to test, what I'll do is I'll set a breakpoint for our first run, mm -hmm. and that way we can walk through all these items and make sure that everything is working properly. So if we run the game, we see we immediately drop into load content, and here we are inside of the for each loop. Now at the moment, screens contains only one item, so we're only going to go through one iteration. But we can see that once we've entered the loop, screen na name now contains the string main. So of course we can look that up in the dictionary. So if we step over our first line, we now have the screen variable pointing at an actual instance of screen main. Nice. Now the next one we'll do is we'll turn around and assemble a name into texture name. So if we step over texture name, we can see that the formatting resulted in screen underscore main. So we'll use that as the name of our texture asset. Mm -hmm. We'll pass that name into style.loadTexture and store that using said background. So with the dev 10 step over that, everything seems to have worked. So I'll take the breakpoint out and then just hit F5 to allow execution to continue. So the rest of the game should initialize and load. And we can see that it has loaded and it's drawing its new background texture. Very nice. And we've assembled a set of um, development textures, ones that are simple in nature just to make it easy to see where you're at because we want to avoid having to write text on every one of our screens just to tell what the screen is sure. until we get more of our real elements and content in place. So we've got this simple set of textures that has a background pattern and then just the name of the current screen. So now we know we're looking at the main screen and we can see that the texture is indeed loading. So all that is working perfectly. Now with that, that really has our screen system in effect. We've okay. got the core screen functionality in place, we've got stack-based screen management in place, and we've seen how we can make a an instance of a screen and then register that into the system using the dictionary and then display it using our stack management system. Excellent. Is there anything else you want to add? I think that takes care of it. So right. screens are now usable. All right. Well, that wraps up this video then. Thanks a lot.